Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we are into part four and the final part of the Roger Hillegas competency hearing, in which it is to be determined whether or not Roger Hillegas is competent enough to stand trial and represent himself in his upcoming kidnapping trial, which, spoiler alert, he was found competent enough to do all that, and now he's going to go, to go through all his sovereign citizen spiel at this point. So let's go ahead and carry on with the final part of this uh, rather long video. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. I understand your position. Now let, let's move forward. Um, I was hoping we had representative from the filing office here today in the event of a adjudication of competency and also from the Orange County Sheriff. It doesn't look like we're, we're going to stand up that type of a discussion today to make sure that Mr. Lucas has access to whatever he needs to make filings in this case, review things promptly, essentially in real time, so that his custody status does not work to his disadvantage. Um, what I would like to do is set a hearing. Uh, unfortunately, the court's not available next week, uh, and then I'm in trial the following week, but I can set a hearing first thing in the morning, or actually one o'clock in the afternoon, July 6th, one in the afternoon, July 6th, where we can cover a couple things, including making sure that the, there are no technology or logistic impediments to Mr. Hillegas's status of um, being a defendant, uh, representing himself or presenting himself while he's at the jail. Will July 6th to 1 o'clock work for the state? No, Your Honor, I'll be uh, throughout that week. About uh, two weeks at first. So I would prefer perhaps if we could be at the end of a uh, calendar, uh, latter part of June, if that's available. Eleven o'clock Tuesday, June twenty seventh. Eleven o'clock Tuesday, June twenty seventh. So two weeks or so from now. <coughs> so here's what I would hope to do. I, I'm in trial. I, I'm in trial. So I would tell the jury go for an early lunch, and we would go through some things. One of them would be that I would direct the Washington County Sheriff's Office representative who has information and that somebody from the filing office here to have them come in and make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to so that Mr. Hillegas is not prejudiced by the fact that he's in custody while he's defending himself from serious criminal charges. So I will um, issue an order uh, directing somebody to come both from both of those entities to be able to speak on, on things like that. So one thing for you, Mr. Hillegas, is if there are any issues that you believe are working to your disadvantage with the way you're having access to information, computers, tablet, filing office, um, be prepared to address them when I see you on June 27th at 11 o'clock. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if you want a, the court to take another look at your custody status, I looked at it recently, but if you're asking the court to take another look at it, you need to follow a request, follow a motion. Call it motion to change custody status and put in there good cause. And it, it, if you're going to say, Judge, I'll be in Texas, you, you don't even waste your time. I'm not going to allow that. I need you to be living somewhere in Washoe County. Um, you need to uh, agree, even if you don't like it, that you're going to have to wear something that tracks where you are, tracks your movement, even if you don't like it, and you're going to have to pay for that. So, and then we're going to have to talk about what a reasonable bail would be. So if you can make a persuasive argument to the court that you can check those three boxes, somewhere in Washington County, uh, uh, have a GPS monitor, 
and reasonable bail, the court will take another look at it because if you just say, Judge, you don't have any right to keep me in the jail, you're just going to be wasting your time. Well, I would object that that's punishment, and I have not been convicted of a crime. For you to put me on house arrest is punishment. To put me on a tracking monitor is also punishment. It's unconstitutional. Oh, come on now, dude. Uh, earlier in this hearing, you were saying that the court system is unconstitutional. So uh, how can we trust what you think is constitutional and what isn't constitutional? Because you definitely lack the experience on that front. So uh, you might as well suck it up, buttercup, because you're in here for the long haul. And as one of the people, I'm standing on my constitutional rights. And I will tell you that there is so much exculpatory evidence that the prosecutor, I, I don't have any discovery. And the prosecutor, we're going to tell you so much evidence in this case that this case should be dismissed immediately. Okay. Let's uh, I hate to break this to you, dude, but uh, the discovery that you're complaining about uh, was in possession of the lawyer you just fired. You didn't even bother asking for it. So, uh, well, dude. All you gotta do now is just ask the uh, prosecutor for it to be, be to begin with. I mean, it's that damn simple. He's supposed to give it to you anyway. Just stay on the track, though. If you want me to change your custody status, that's what I would be looking for. Mr. Stiggy, do you want to talk about that issue? Oh, only uh, I wish the court would not keep coming back to this. I mean, the law says there have to be a change in circumstances. This is no change in circumstances. I, I, the law is clear. You don't get special privileges if you're self-represented in jail. I would I would not like it to be the case that because he's now self-represented, he would have more of an option to be released. He, he has no more nor less. What I will do is just remind him what the court's concerns were at our last hearing. And if, he, if there's a change of approach or ability or resources between that last hearing and the sometime here before trial, I'll take another look at it. So let's move on. Um, I've already told you, uh, Mr. Elias, um, if this matter goes to trial, and if you want to, if you need to uh, be in a wheelchair, you're gonna have to let the court know, Mr. Steggy know, and we'll have a hearing outside the, the jury as to what the medical need is. Without that hearing, that permission, you're not to appear in court in a wheelchair. Again, we're not picking on you. That's how the court rolls in civil matters and criminal justice matters. It's not a Roger Hillius uh, matter. <laughs> right. um, now, you mentioned discovery. So what is the status, please, of the, the discovery that the state otherwise would be required to produce to defense counsel. Uh, what, what's your understanding, Mr. Stiggy, of where we are in that, and what, if anything, is still owed to Mr. Hillegas? Well, so, um, in justice court, full discovery was provided uh, through Mr. Hillegas' counsel. Oh, <laughs> the very person he just fired what a dumbass for not even bothering to ask the lawyer about discovery to begin with. Uh, after he uh, became self-represented, uh, we uh, made available to him a number of thumb drives containing um, discovery. Um, given the, uh, our known, the defense known history, we uh, both emailed him and mailed him saying, please come to uh, the DA's office to pick up this discovery that those thumb drives now have dust on them because the defendant never availed himself. Uh, of well, now he can't. So what, what, how do we get it to him well, quickly at this point? Quite easily. His, because he is an e-filer, his email address is known and he is served by um, an e-flex uh, to his email address. We now can deliver discovery to an email address. So shortly, that will happen. Now, to avoid any games that we've, this case has been played with from the defendant, I would ask that he, before the court, uh, tell you his email address so that we can avoid any shenanigans uh, related to this. 
Well, you need his email address and his eFlex. Well, if you file something with eFlex, if he has an eFlex account, yes. he gets it, right? Yes. But you want to send him things that are not fileable. You want to just, like, yes. if he were in person, you'd hand it to him. Okay. Or he could come to your office. Yes. For example, if uh, we have any private defense counsel in here, we currently send him a link to Discovery to their email address. I know that he has eFlex, and I've heard him complain on jail calls about uh, eFlex. So in, rather than just, and I suspect it's the same email address, but I want him right now to affirm to this court what his email address to, or ask that the court do that. If not, I'll just send it to the email address that's on file with eFlex. And if he says he doesn't have it, this is the moment where he had the opportunity to tell me or you the true email address. Well, so the idea is that they want to get this to you right away. I, I object to everything he's saying. I, I'm asking for a paper copy printout of every piece of discovery that they have because it keeps changing. It's changed over the last four years. Every time they realize that they're withholding evidence and I'm calling them out on it, they decide to, to give a little piece of evidence. It's changed so much. There's still so much evidence that they're withholding. Those are those are criminal acts. They're they're withholding evidence. They're tampering with evidence. They're tampering with witnesses. And well, I need a paper printout of the copy. I don't have access to a computer. I don't have access to a law law library. I don't have access to email. I don't have access to everything that he's saying thumb drives if he wants to provide me the discovery they need to print the discovery out and provide it to me well the thing is dude you're not exactly a special case i mean there are other prisoners out there that uh do uh, use the internet from prison to uh research their cases they do have law libraries within prisons to help the prisoners out in their cases. So why don't you have access to it? Is it just that you haven't uh, made any effort to actually do the research into what your resources are in prison, dude? Because, well, that's the only explanation I can think of. And then there's the little matter of the discovery. Sounds like the prosecution has been bending over backwards to try to help you out with that. But uh, so far, you've been just acting like a complete softard and rejecting it, calling them a bunch of uh, liars and con artists and everything like that. So how is anything supposed to get done if you are the one who's not being cooperative? Well, I'm not. I'm going to sell. I'm in the cell 22 hours a day. I do not have access to a computer. I do not have access to a law library. I do not have access to a, a printer or a typewriter or any kind of way to do research. So I'm asking them to provide a printout of the discovery because it keeps changing and it's changed over the last four years. Well, some of it I'm going to assume is not printable. Some of it is audio or video tape. Is that right, Mr. Stegen? Yes, and, and I, I'm grateful for my use of the term shenanigans because we jumped right to a shenanigan. Um, there is no, our, our statutes on discovery don't entitle him to paper versus any other form. He has a right to uh, inspect and copy the discovery. This is superior to any method. Um, and so, what, superior to any method. To, well, to the idea, so we give him paper. He's gonna he's gonna engage the shenanigans, saying I didn't get all the paper. We know it's in the court record that he has access to email because we we I showed in my motion, my second motion for gag order, that these Nazi themed missives that he's sending are coming from an email through email correspondence between him and others. So email is the perfect, the perfect. Um, format for discovery to occur. And I, I do not believe it would be appropriate for the court to dictate which that paper be given rather than uh, electronic uh, copies. Well, here's the, here's, here's the way I'm intending to handle this. The way I'm intending to handle this is to make sure that you have a tablet, computer access, law library access, and the ability to prepare uh, uh, for this trial. If there are issues remaining, when I see you in two weeks, and judge whatever you want, it isn't working, I'll, I'll look at making the district attorney's office print out every piece of paper 
that the law otherwise would require them to produce to you and have it hand delivered up to the jail. But I'm going to let two weeks work to see if the email method works and the eFlex method works because that is no different than what somebody who's not representing themselves uh, or presenting themselves would have. And uh, I do not have access to eFlex. I do not have access to my internet. I do not have access to my email. Did you just not hear uh, what the judge said? Because he pretty much made it clear that you were going to have access to everything you needed so that way there would be no shenanigans. So get that through your imbecilic mind and get with it, dude, and use it to your advantage. But unfortunately, you're just a plain old soft heart and you're not going to do any of that uh, fancy schmancy legal uh, uh, study because that just won't play very well into your mindset. I'm in a cell 22 hours a day without access to a law library. Well, here's the uh, let's suppose no internet, no computer, not convince the court of that. that. If you convince the court of that. Oh. So you're saying two weeks of, of the same. So I'm not getting out. To go to a library, I'm not getting out to have access to it. Well, hold on. I think there are weeks of the same. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume the Washington County Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office, um, I, you know, I'll issue an order that the Washington County Sheriff's Office knows, either they know right now because they have de we have deputies here, or they'll know by the time, you know, the next day or two when I get an order out, that you're, self that you're representing yourself, that you're presenting yourself, and that I'm expecting them within, you know, safety for you and others up there themselves to make sure you have resources available to review information, send emails, and make filings. All day so, long, not just for an hour. That's not going to be all day long, but it's going to be for more... My waking hours? Uh, I'm okay. going to review some of the other uh, approaches used in cases like this and come up with a reasonable... A printer, a, a computer, a laptop, I understand. I understand. internet, so I can do research. I can't access my email. I cannot access eFlex without, well, without a laptop, without a printer, without paper to do my research. Mr. Stake, yeah. I would suggest that a review of the law on this subject would, would be helpful. Um, <coughs> you know, I'm confident and I'll try to prepare a bench memo for uh, the court on this issue, but. This isn't sort of doesn't turn into a Burger King uh, situation where you get whatever you want, right? Where the jail has to bend over backwards, or the court has to order special accommodations. Because here, 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 let me just say this: here, here's my mindset: reasonable access in order to properly defend himself. I agree. Okay, reasonable access is that a clear line? No. Does it mean he has the ability to file things? Yes. The re ability to access a computer, do internet research? Yes. Access to library. Well, I agree, yes, but he also has to make sure he can access his email and because you often, the district attorney will serve things, uh, 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 distribute things to defense counsel that way. So, but right now I'm hearing from Mr. Hilgis that that, that is limited or, or non-existent on many things. So we're gonna make sure that doesn't become an impediment to his reasonable ability to defend himself. Um, but. We're going to drill down on it when I see you in two weeks and, and one day. Between now and then, I just have other matters I'm going to have to do. I'm going to order this, Mr. Elias, that you make sure that if you're not comfortable stating this on the record um, uh, in open court and being uh, having um, this possibly played on the internet later, what your email address is, you can do it if you want to. Tell us what it is. If not, when I go off the bench, uh, I'm going to have you, I ordered that you tell Mr. Stiggy what it is. He has it. Okay, well. It's through an eFlex. No, it's the same email that's used on eFlex. He has it. It's the same email that they use on eFlex to send me. It's my email. It's, he's got it. Did you just not hear uh, what the judge said? Because he pretty much made it clear that you were going to have access to everything you needed so that way there would be no shenanigans. So get that through your imbecilic mind and 
get with it, dude, and use it to your advantage. But unfortunately, you're just a plain old soft tart and you're not going to do any of that uh, fancy schmancy legal uh, uh, study because that just won't play very well into your mindset. Well, would you, do you know off the top of your head what it is, Mr. Stegi? Could you identify it? I'll ask Mr. Hill, yes, is that the, the email he's referring to? Uh, I'm getting to it. Okay. While he's doing that, let, let's go forward because we have, we have more to talk about here. Um, R-H-I-L-L-Y-G-U-S at gmail.com. All right, is that the one you're using, sir? Yeah. Okay, so we're good. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the, this June 27th hearing we're going to have in two weeks to make sure that you're having reasonable access mm -hmm to technology and information to defend yourself. If you believe that you're going to need a trial postponement, because trial is currently set for Monday, August 28, I want to hear if you're in a position by June 27th to know whether you're seeking a postponement to, to tell us. You can tell us on the record. You can file a motion. But if you know on the record by that time, you can tell us, Judge, yes, we're going to need a, I'm going to need a postponement. Or Judge, I'm going to be filing a motion later today. Or Judge, I filed a motion yesterday and I for the good cause reasons. I, Mr. Hillius, listen, I realize it's June and the trial is at the end of August. I know that's a short period of time. And I, I, we're not going to do things that, because of the competency hearing and the delay, that's it's going to work to your disadvantage. Now, I know Mr. Stegi is going to say a lot of the delay was, you know, self-imposed self, uh, here by your actions. I, I, I'm beyond that right now. I want to make sure you have enough time to prepare. So give some thought to whether you're going to be asking for a postponement. You don't have to tell me now. You can give it more thought. I keep wanting to go back to this court last jurisdiction and there's all kinds of school. Well, we're going to have a hearing. We're this case should be dismissed, Your Honor. You've got plenty of information in front of you that I have not committed a crime. There's no crimes committed here. There is no victim. And there's all kinds of exculpatory evidence, which includes a writ of cert filed with the United States Supreme Court naming Amos Stegi and Christopher Hicks as perpetrators on RICO. And there's also right now a FOIA request the federal government is looking into why I was unlawfully taken in LA and in Missouri under a Fourth Amendment violation, which is an illegal search and seizure. Dude, really come on now. I think the federal government has a lot better things to do than uh, deal with your trial right now, considering it hasn't even made it to uh, made it to trial yet in this district you gotta go through the process dude if you want your case to be heard at the federal level you got to go through it step by step you just can't skip all the way to the end dude it doesn't work that way without proper documentation for a search warrant or an arrest warrant well okay so when that FOIA comes through it's going to be federal well Here's my take on and the investigation that's happening right now with the for-profit corporation known as the Washoe County Detention Facility and the Washoe County Sheriff's Office, for-profit corporations run by Mark Bello and Darren Balaam. They are under investigation for ADA violations and for HIPAA violations and for Fourth Amendment violations, illegal search and seizure. You keep saying that, but it really has no uh, relevance to your kidnapping charge in this uh case and that's even if those uh investigations that you say are happening are even happening to begin with because well given uh, your past uh, history i really can't trust your word for anything and the united states or the nevada supreme court ruled in mac back in december that anybody that does an illegal search and seizure loses any immunity and they are personally liable and responsible so that's what's being investigated right now. And so if, if there needs to be a continuance, I'm not asking for a continuance. 
I'm asking for this case to be dismissed. I'm asking to be released because I'm being unlawfully held and detained. Thank you. Files at the end of August. You're, you're right now you're like, that's great, but judge, I'm gonna be filing motions that are gonna lead to this case being dismissed, so there's never gonna be a problem. I get that. I object. I don't file motions. You object to that because you don't file motions. Well, dude, uh, you are in a system that requires you to file motions to get anything accomplished. So you need to start doing that. Otherwise, you're going to lose this case, which I already foresee that you're going to lose it anyway because, well, you just have no way of defending yourself properly at this point. This is going to be a turkey shoot. I file notices in demand because this is a... Tell me he didn't just say that. Yeah, tell me he just didn't say that he files demands for the court. You don't demand anything from the court. You freaking butter brain douche canoe moron. I'm, I'm proceeding under the common law. And the NRS 1.030, the common law. I am one of the people, and that's how I've expressed my status and my standing. I stand on the Constitution, and on my status as a natural flesh and blood living man, this is my court. I'm opening up a court of, of um, competent jurisdiction, and you lack jurisdiction in this matter. So basically, what you're saying is that you believe that. You, they lack jurisdiction over you in this matter, that you want to take over the matter in this case and therefore make yourself a judge, thereby declaring yourself innocent of this crime. I'm sure that's what you're wanting to do, but that's not exactly how it works. You are uh, tried and convicted by a jury of your peers and whatnot, not by yourself, not certainly by the person that allegedly committed the crime, because that's not how the freaking law works, you dumbass! I mean, I don't know who the hell taught you our system of government or laws or anything like that, but that's not how it works. You are not allowed to be your own judge, jury, and executioner in your own trial. That just doesn't happen. So this case shall be dismissed with a notice to dismiss because you lack jurisdiction. And when that, I will get that to you as soon as I get it from Mr. Passat. Let me just finish the thought, and I'm going to move to another subject. In the event there are pending motions that have not been decided, the court will hear them and make decisions on them, hopefully from the bench, on July 27th at the pretrial conference, if the case is still pending at that time. I'm not at this point going to take time and discuss any further things like for dire, jury instructions, marking exhibits, if and when we'll have a discussion on that at a later time. Custody status I've already referred to. Technology at trial, we can deal with that later. Subpoenas for trial, we'll deal with that later. Hearing on cameras in the courtroom for any trial, I told you that's an issue. We'll uh, firm that up later if we get to the point where we're, that trial is coming down the pike and uh, close by. Standby counsel has been relieved of their uh, obligation and their appointment for competency proceedings only. Uh, Mr. Elias, I just remind you, you're not to contact Mr. Hanty without going through Mr. Silverberg and making sure you reach out to him before you attempt any direct or indirect contact to Mr. Hanty. It's uh, because he is his counsel, you have to go through him. The gag order motion that the state has previously filed, uh, the court will set that for a hearing um, and the motion to strike the two pleadings, the court will set that for a hearing. Whatever else you're gonna file, um, uh, if the court believes a hearing would benefit the court's analysis, uh, I'll set it for a hearing as well. Um, Mr. Stegge, the court orders the, uh, the Washington County District Attorney's Office to 
to promptly email the discovery um, that you previously were, were going to make available at your office to counsel um, to Mr. Hillegas at the email that, that you have that he's confirmed the accuracy of. We'll take up at the hearing in two weeks and one day um, if this is working or if there are other things that the court needs to order. And the court does anticipate entering an order shortly uh, directing the filing office and the you know, notifying the Washington County uh, Sheriff and the filing office of Mr. Um, Hillegas' um, self-represented or self-presented status and to make sure he has reasonable access to do things he needs in order to prepare for hearings and trial. Um, I've already indicated that when he's in court, he can have his writing arm free, and if he's sitting there alone at table, he can have both arms free. All right, that's really all I wanted to do today. I have to get to some other things uh, that the court has to handle. Mr. Stegi, I'll hear from you if the court overlooked anything or any final thoughts, and I'll hear after that by Mr. Lucas. No, thank you. Mr. Lucas, anything else for the good of the order here? I would like to make a record that uh, the exculpatory evidence which is missing is a writ of habeas corpus filed in federal court regarding my mother, multiple Nevada appeals, the civil record, the whole record, the uh, federal lawsuit that was filed for racketeering, and, uh, and it was taken up to the United States Supreme Court as a writ of cert. I'd like that writ of cert. The Division of Financial Institutions, which was um, presented with a complaint that was investigated regarding the facility where my mother was being abused and neglected. The Nevada Attorney General um, has a complaint as well. The Nevada Ombudsman investigated the, the institution and found that they were deficient. Uh, my mother was hospitalized. That we don't have anything from Stone Valley. This, the responding officer, um, Timothy Avila, on his body cam, is reading a protection order that was filed by me to protect my mother. That has not been presented as evidence. Nothing from Stone Valley has been presented as evidence. Her whole three-year case file, all of her hospitalizations unnecessarily, all the medication that she was taking unnecessarily. This is just a thumbnail sketch of the exculpatory evidence that they're withholding. Their job is to look at a case and decide if they have reason to bring it forward. They have no reason to bring this forward. I have not committed a crime against my mother, against anybody. There's plenty of exculpatory evidence that will exonerate this case that's being withheld. I ask that that be investigated and brought forward and they can dismiss the case. Thank you for letting me make a record. That was a rather pathetic speech right there, dude, filled with uh, irrelevant garbage because this uh, is not the trial itself. It is the uh, competency hearing. Therefore, it really holds absolutely no weight at this point. So that pretty much marks the end of his uh, competency hearing right there. So uh, I really don't think this guy stands a snowball's chance of hell of winning this trial that he's about to go into. I mean, if he came in and figured this shit out in a uh, competency hearing, how is he supposed to be able to learn the law within a few weeks and be able to win this case against a prosecutor who has so many years of experience in dealing with these matters? I mean, like I said, snowball's chance in hell? Uh, yeah. Good luck, dude. You're gonna need it. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.